Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have benign tumors. Uh, that is, we are studying most common four benign tumors. Squamous papilloma, Veruca vulgaris, which is also known as common wart, uh, keratoacanthoma and oral nevus. Uh, tumor is nothing but uh, a swelling, a simple swelling of the tissue. Uh, if we apply very strict protocol we cannot say that it is a neoplastic process but sometimes we interchangeably use a tumor and neoplasm so the tumors of oral cavity uh, we can uh, divide it is based on the tissue of origin they are basically five types one is epithelial in origin and the second one is connective tissue in origin third one is muscular and fourth one is nerve tissue and fifth one is the tumors of jaw metastatic tumors of jaw so today's session is about epithelial tumors that is epithelial benign tumors of oral cavity and there are very various tumors there are n number of tumors but we are mainly focusing on squamous papilloma veruca vulgaris keratoacanthoma and oral nevus so let's see one by one. So the first tumor is squamous papilloma, veruca vulgaris. So these two should be studied together because both are caused by HPV virus 6 and 11. Okay. So this squamous papilloma and veruca vulgaris the causative virus is hpv all hpv lesions are very infective but the squamous papilloma uh, do not seem to be uh, contagious okay so this is not a uh, very contagious rest of the hpv viruses are contagious so veruca vulgaris it is also known as skin what it's a generic term for veruca vulgaris squamous papilloma and veruca vulgaris all which is also known as skin warts these two are clinically and microscopically are almost same while coming to the clinical features uh, the growth is exophytic pedunculated painless which is made up of numerous small finger like projections uh, which uh, result in a lesion with roughened or a verrucous or cauliflower surface. Verrucous means a cauliflower which has a cauliflower appearance. We know how the common wart looks like which will be a pedunculated one. And intraoral it is most commonly on the tongue, lips, buccal mucosa, gingiva, palate and the area adjacent to uvula and the common wart the common wart or erica vulgaris which is a tumor of skin which is analogous to oral papilloma but uncommon on the oral mucous membrane however these can be seen on the lips and occasionally intraorally in patients with veruca on the hands or fingers so patients with veruca vulgaris or skin wart on the hands or fingers uh, sometimes the intraoral lesions also will be present because these people they have the tendency to uh, fing finger sucking or fingernail beating there will be auto inoculation from the fingers to the oral cavity and uh, along with squamous papilla we need to study the cowden syndrome so papillomatous or pebbly lesions and fibromas of various sites in the oral cavity are recognized as one of the many manifestations of multiple hamatoma and neoplasia syndrome which is known as cowden syndrome so it has both fibromas and uh, papilloma so uh, in histologic features it has long thin finger like projections extending above the mucosal surface each made up of continuous layer of stratified squamous cells stratified squamous cells that is epithelium and which contains a thin central connective tissue core 
which supports the nutrient blood vessels. The essential feature is proliferation of the spinous cells in the papillary pattern. Spinous cells which proliferate in a papillary pattern and the connective tissue is supporting stroma uh, and it is not a part of this neoplastic element. So mainly it happens on the uh, spinous cells in the papillary pattern. Okay, we have you know papillary layer and reticular layer and connective tissue layer. And the next uh, thing is coelocytes. Coelocytes, which is a HPV altered epithelial cells with perinuclear clear spaces and pycnotic nuclei. And it may or may not be found in the superficial layers of epithelium so coelocytes are also associated with ferruca vulgaris and moving on to the treatment the most accepted treatment as we all know is excision including the base of the mucosa into which the pedicle inserts so there is a pedicle the stalk is there so we need to remove the base of the mucosa where this pedicle inserts if it is properly excised the recurrence chance is very rare uh, some uh, other methods also we have like uh, conservative surgical excision curettage uh, and also newer methods like uh, liquid nitrogen cryotherapy and topical keratolytic agents which the agents uh, liquids which containing uh, salicylic acid salicylic acid and lactic acid so these are keratolytic uh, agents and also cryotherapy also we can opt but most commonly excision is opted so that is all about squamous papilloma or verruca vulgaris now let's move on to the keratoacanthoma Keratoacanthoma, which is also known as self-healing carcinoma, molluscum sebaceum or verrucoma. Verrucoma. So all these are keratoacanthomas, other names. It is a relatively common low-grade malignancy uh, which originate in the pillow sebaceous glands. So sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands and it is considered to be a variant of invasive squamous cell carcinoma the common etiological factors are sunlight chemical carcinogens trauma HPV virus genetic factors and immuno, uh, immunocompromised uh, status so it occurs in all age group but incidence increases with age men to women is 2 is to 1 ratio it is commonly seen on men and more common in uh, fair skinned people uh, and in sun exposed areas so it is mostly associated with the sunlight exposure so fair skin and uh, sun exposed areas are more prone to uh, this keratoacanthoma the face, neck and dorsum of upper extremities are the most common sites. Intraoral lesions are uh, quite uncommon. Now, may be seen on the lips because it is exposed to sunlight. And the lesions are typically solitary, elevated, umbilicated or uh, crater form with a depressed central core or plug. So a depressed central core. And it is often painful and there will be a regional lymphadenopathy. And in histologic features, this consists of hyperplastic squamous epithelium which grows into the underlying connective tissue. So we know this is epithelium and connective tissue when we take a epithelial cross section. So there will be hyperplastic squamous epithelium which grows into the connective tissue. And the surface is covered by a layer of para or orthokeratin with central plugging. And 
at the deep uh, margin of this tumor there will be islands of uh, epithelium uh, which invades and usually this area cannot be differentiated from squamous cell carcinoma so sometimes it may also invade the perineural spaces but this is not a distinguishing feature between squamous cell carcinoma and keratoacanthoma so it is misdiagnosed as squamous cell carcinoma and there will be a pseudo carcinomatous infiltration which typically presents as a smooth well demarcated front that does not extend beyond the level of sweat glands and the connective tissue shows chronic inflammatory cell infiltration so the characteristic feature is found at the margins where the normal adjacent epithelium is elevated towards the central portion of the crater okay so this is a crater so at the margin we get uh, the normal adjacent epithelium it will be elevated towards the central portion it will be elevated towards the central portion of the crater there an abrupt change in the normal epithelium as the hypo uh, hypoplastic acanthotic epithelium is reached so there will be hyperplastic acanthotic acanthotic uh, epithelium is reached at this borders so that is why diagnosis may be impossible if the normal adjacent epithelium is not included in the biopsy so always we should take normal and along with the lesion so without the normal epithelium we will not be able to differentiate the margins so this is where the unique feature of keratoacanthoma lies which can differentiate it from squamous cell carcinoma so in treatment part uh, just like any other benign lesions we need to do a surgical excision and patient should follow for the development of uh, any new primary skin cancer okay so that is about keratoacanthoma next we have um, oral nevi next we have nevus which is a benign exophytic pigmented congenital lesion of skin or mucosa which is composed of focal collection of rounded melanocytes so these melanocytes are known as nevus cell the term nevus we commonly used for mole and nevi most commonly occur on skin occasionally on mucous membrane and it is also called as birthmark so birthmark and mole we are uh, generic terms we are commonly using these two terms they are nothing but nevus so we have five types of nevus the first one is intradermal or mucosal junctional nevus compound nevus blue nevus which is also known as macular form and epithelioid nevus or it is known as spitz we'll start with the intramucosal nevus or intradermal nevus so it the lesion uh, grows very slowly it is usually less than 1 cm and um, it is occurs on young patients and is one of the common skin lesion on this young group of people on skin it is uh, a raised or a flat lesion and it is tan or dark brown in color it will often contain more hair than the surrounding normal skin and the intramucosal nevus occurs in oral cavity mostly on hard palate and gingiva hard palate or gingiva okay and it is asymptomatic uh, pigmented brown or uh, black in color and it is like a slightly elevated papule or flat macule so it will be a slightly elevated with presence of hair on the skin or sometimes without uh, hairs and sometimes it will be a flat macule so it could be a elevated papule or a flat macule 
okay so in histopathology it is characterized by nests cords or sheets of nevus cells confined to connective tissue and the cells of nevus may be epithelioid lymphocyte uh, like or spindle or multinucleated types there will be mitotic figures and the most uh, striking feature of nevus is the presence of fibrous connective tissue zone which separates it from the overlying epithelium okay so these are the histopathology features and the treatment has a general rule for all solitary pigmented papules or nodules of the oral cavity it should go for excision and once excised anyway uh, do not tend to recur so recurrence is uh, very uh, few uh, percentage and the second one is junctional nevus which is benign brown to black lesion occurs primarily on the skin and occasionally on oral mucosa and within oral cavity it usually appears as a pigmented macule or macule lesion on the hard palate or gingiva so macule lesion will not be very much elevated it is just a color change uh, which we can uh, see on the surface unlike papule which will be a elevated lesion and in junctional nevus the histopathology is characterized by presence of nevus cell nest in the basilar region of epithelium and uh, there is no nevus cells found in surround connective tissue and it presents as a solitary small pink to reddish brown papule so the color is uh, pink or reddish brown it occurs on the skin of face and extremities of children in histopathology it is usually composed of spindle shaped and large epithelioid nevus with abundant cytoplasm and it is relatively circumscribed uh, nests located at or near the dermal and epidermal interface it is multinucleated and the treatment is conservative excision so that's all about uh, nevus we have five types intradermal or intramucosal junctional compound blue and epithelioid spits the intra the mixed pattern of intradermal and junctional that is seen in the basal region and uh, connective tissue which is known as compound the color is blue and pink here and junctional epithelium has potential to change malignant melanoma most of the lesions are seen in heart palate and gingiva and the treatment is excision and we should send for excisional biopsy okay so that is all about nevus